Hello there, I'm down here on this beautiful crisp Sunday morning and about six weeks ago I took on this allotment. So it's about 203 square metres and I've made a little bit of progress. So I will put the link of the video down below that I made when I first took this on so that you can have a look at it if you wish. And today I'm going to go around and you can see what I've been up to. Now this bit here is the low maintenance part of the allotment. There are four raised beds here and I've delineated the beds with the wood chip here. Very helpful to help keep down things like grass and weeds. Also wide enough to get a wheelbarrow through and I think that's very good particularly for harvesting and bringing things like compost down to help improve your soil quality. So just behind my foot there, you can see that patch of grass there. Now the grass is growing up through the wood chip up against the side of the raised bed. And one way you can deal with this is to keep chucking wood chip down over it and it tends to give up after a while. Another option of course is to dig it out with a trowel or a spade, something like that, and then reapply the wood chip. But uh, wood chip can be so helpful because it can help to cover areas and help keep it more manageable. And that's particularly useful I think for people who don't have much time to dedicate to their allotment hearing their gardening. So I made a start on my vineyard down here. Now I planted two vines. They're either Muscat Blanc or Lake Mont Seedless and they're cuttings from existing vines. So we'll see what they are. Now I put that post in there and from here to that post there was already here and I took the allotment on so that's very helpful indeed. Now I might put a taller one in there and I'm probably going to continue along with the wires so that the vines have got something to grow up. Now this vine here is already a good size. I think I took the cutting about two or three years ago. I had it growing in the garden in the ground and it's indeed done well. Now grapes fruit off of canes which grow off of the previous year's growth. So it is possible that this could carry a crop this year. But what I really should do is cut this right back so that the vine can concentrate its energy on establishment and then in following years then take the fruit. But what I'm probably going to do is leave it to do what it wants to do and we'll see. It may die back a little bit, it may not, but uh, we'll see if it produces and could be a little interesting experiment to do. This vine here is a younger specimen so you can see it's got a little bit of growth on it. Now it's unlikely this will have a crop on it this year but once again we will see and I'm hoping for a nice strong establishment here. Now grapes are very tolerant of all sorts of different soil. Now the one that they really don't like is poor draining and quite lucky down here that the soil seems to be quite light and well draining so I'm expecting grapes to do very well down here indeed. Now I had all sorts of options available to me here for this area so what I've done confined this vine to here and confined this vine to this space so that leaves me this area for another vine so what I'm looking at are two varieties one is rear which is a dark pink almost purple grape very ornamental and very tasty the other one is Suffolk red which is a vine which is very hardy so therefore is recommended for northern gardeners so some of you may wish to check that one out so with regards to grape growing I think this is one of the most important things that we could consider getting into particularly here in the southeast where we do get periods periods of very low if not any rainfall during the summer periods and grapevines put down deep roots to find water and they really don't take much looking after so they're tolerant of heat, they're tolerant of dry conditions so look into growing grapes and there are so many different varieties out there these days so what I'll do is link some grape videos down below and you can check some of those out if you want to get into grape growing. I've made a no dig bed here so there's about two and a half tons of ready-made compost here now I placed it down on top of some cardboard that I laid down now I didn't actually need to put the cardboard down the cardboard acts as a screen to help to stop weeds and grass from growing up underneath but this area here was relatively clear it's clear bare soil as you could see more or less anyway and there was a membrane down on here when I took the allotment on so took that away bare soil but I chose to put the cardboard down anyway because as I stated it acts as a screen and also it can help to help the soil to hold more moisture which can be particularly useful. Now as you can see what I've done here is delineated the bed if you will with these curb stones which were already on the allotment when I took it on and particularly around the edges where you can see 
there is grass. This can be useful to help to stop grass and weeds, etc., from growing onto your no dig bed. I've got this area here. Now what I've done is put a tree stake in either side and I'm thinking about putting a wire along and maybe growing some grapevines up here once again. Another option I'm thinking of is growing peas up here. So this area here, what am I going to do with it? What I'm thinking about doing is covering it up with a membrane and then growing things like squash, courgettes, marrows, cucumbers in between, just to make it a nice low maintenance idea because one of the main things that this allotment has to be to me is it has to be relatively low maintenance and able to fit into my work regime. So manageability is key here and I'm expecting some nice things from this area. Now, this part of the allotment here at the start, I'm going to be leaving free for deliveries. Things like compost, manure, grass clippings, things that I can make more compost out of. I've got some straw bales here. Now, in the no-dig bed behind me, I didn't put any straw in them, but the ones down the back there, I did. So straw can be a very good part, very good component of compost. Now, I'm going to be building some compost bins here out of pallets. Now I've got some pallets here, I'm hopefully going to be getting some more and the plan is to have about three or four tonnes of compost being made all the time so I've got plenty to enrich the beds with. One of the sticking points if you will with regards to employing the no dig method can be lack of compost. So have plenty of compost underway and then that way you can always enrich your beds, you've always got more nutrition to feed your soil with to help you to produce better crops. The no dig method is a very long term way of looking at gardening. So you're always building and adding as opposed to taking away. So that can be a good mindset if you will I think with regards to food growing. Now I'm currently thinking about how to make the bit behind me manageable, so how to go about it. So I'm thinking a lot about permaculture, about putting membranes down and growing things through holes in the membranes, manageability ideas. So any ideas people have got, anything you would like to see me put in down here, please feel free to comment down below with that. Plenty to do, plenty to grow, and of course if you like my work please feel free to like, share and subscribe. And you can always check me out on Dan underscore Home Gardens on Instagram if indeed you're interested. Thank you very much for viewing.